All right, so we got the bowling balls and they are now all at 1500 grit sanded. We wanted to be able to see a pretty big difference. So we're gonna throw each of them again and just kind of see if they still keep the same order or not. So we will start with the theorem. Well, it doesn't look the same, duh. So we're gonna be moving to the right and throwing it further to the left. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna throw one shot with each ball real quick, just so that they all get a small amount of oil on them. Cause that first shot isn't really, doesn't even matter anyway. I'll even stay there for the first shot here. We'll just stay right there and throw each of them right there. And then we'll start to do the evaluation. Nuclear Forge. Huh, that's different. <laughs> Virtual energy blackout. Okay, we're gonna go back to the theorem and throw some shots in a row now. Got a little oil on them. And we gotta move. For sure. Definitely not as angular as it was because the surface is more aggressive. Still pretty good, man. Still pretty good. Couple good shots with that ball. Let's go to the mode of nuclear forge next. We'll just start in that same spot. So I missed left, but man, did that ball come back. <laughs> Wow. Okay. We read the comments, so please feel free to drop them in as many as you like. We do, I do, read them actually. And a lot of times I'll try to respond too. That ball is a appreciably stronger ball now. And it is down lane too. Like, it's a little bit early because of the surface, but it's definitely, a completely different ball overall. It'll be interesting to see what the data says. I mean, man, that ball's a different ball. So that's something that's interesting to note for sure, right? Like this ball obviously with some surface on it is way more uh, aggressive. And it could be once again, this is the symmetric ball of the three. So maybe now because it was symmetric in the first place, it was just going too long. Now it actually can make a good move and that's why we're seeing the performance difference. I'm gonna move again, cause that ball, it, it definitely is stronger. I mean, it's definitely just a much stronger piece, which is interesting. It also kind of shows you the importance of surface. Like 
a ball that maybe doesn't look so good all of a sudden can become a beast simply because you put the right surface on it. Nasty, nasty, okay. So that is what we are gonna do with that ball. We're gonna go to the blackout next. Huh, it's interesting. I'm gonna go back to where I was though with the theorem and see what it is there first. Wow. Wow. So it's a different piece too. Definitely a much stronger piece. Now we're seeing them be a little earlier because of the surface, but we're also seeing them still maintain that angularity down lane. That's good. So I will move back now exactly where I was with the nuclear. Yeah, still angular. Hmm. Interesting. Now I want to know what you guys are thinking. Like you had to drop some more comments right about now. Tell me what you're thinking because this is definitely it is what I expected. But I didn't have any really preconceived notions either. Let the data do all the talking. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's good. That's good. I would probably throw these balls. I would throw the blackout doll. I would throw the nuclear doll for sure. But honestly, I had that theorem polish, especially seeing how much stronger these balls got compared to that ball. That's what I would probably do. Man, that ball's strong. I'm gonna make a move off of that. Wow. I'm gonna let Dustin do some talking in this video too. He's gonna actually go over the data with you. Uh, but what I'm seeing visually is interesting because like for me now, it seems like both times, shiny and dull, the blackout gets a little bit stronger as you throw a couple shots. But the good thing is we got data. So we don't have to have just my opinion. Dustin may contradict me and say, that's not what, I, that's not, that's not what happened, but that's okay. That's all right. The data doesn't lie. Yeah, I mean, that ball is just, that ball is visually to me the strongest now of the group. So we'll let Dustin give you guys some more thoughts on these bowling balls. Um, I'm gonna throw one more shot. One more shot. Seven. Okay, I'm gonna do one more thing too. I'm gonna go grab True Cut Gloss and put it on the ball because some people have asked. I see you guys do it with the ball spinner. Can you do it by hand? If you do it by hand, how does it work? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna put the True Cut Gloss on the Nuclear Forge in front of you. So you can see how I do it by hand. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna use True Cut Gloss on this bowling ball, but first I wanna scan it because people are like, man, does this shine the ball? No, this doesn't really shine the ball. It's not meant to shine the ball. It's meant to slow and stop oil absorption which is gonna give you a urethane-like reaction. Now, you can see this is a 1500 grit finish on this bowling ball currently. So that is the finish that I actually have on it right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to apply True Cut Gloss by hand. You're gonna shake it up a little bit. It is watery. It's not thick like your normal polish because this is not like your normal polish and easy. You're just gonna start on the sides of the ball, go around it like so. We're actually gonna do that twice around the side the best we can. Then we're gonna go to the top. Now we're doing the top like this simply because we're actually gonna be able to put a little more downward force pressure when you go on the top of the ball. So 
kind of spinning around like so. All right. Now we'll flip the ball over. Same thing, gotta put some more gloss on there. Like so. Go around the sides again. See, I'm just kind of moving it around kind of quick when I'm going around the sides, but I'm gonna go around twice. Then I'm really gonna get the top there. Now, the thing with gloss is, is you wanna get as best you can the most even coat possible. That's why we recommend that you use a ball spinner. A ball spinner is going to get you six to nine games. But you can get three to six games easily if you follow this process by hand. All right, so I've got that done now. Go back to the top here. We're going to spin it on its side. Do it again. Now what we're trying to do is just get it as even as possible. That's it. Like so, and then... Get the top. If you've thrown or have tried a bull ball with chocolate gloss, drop a comment, man. Let's, let's see what your thoughts are on this product. Something new at the end of 23 for 24, if you will. A little bit more. Last side, we're just gonna do one more side here and then that'll be it. Four sides, nice and even coat. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to wait 30 minutes. The 30 minute wait time just allows this product to a cure, and that will help with the longevity of it. And then we'll throw a shot so you can see exactly what it does. All right, so we're gonna wait 30 minutes and we're gonna come back and we're gonna throw it, stay tuned. All right, it's glossed, 30 minutes have passed. Let's watch the performance really quick. This is where it struck from. Increased length, more controlled back end. That is True Cut Gloss powered by Turtle X. If you have any more questions, need more information, go to our website, ctdbowling.com. On behalf of Creating the Difference, I am CEO Ronald Hicklin. Talk to you soon.